Hey, thanks for checking out this podcast. Where our hope is that it's an encouragement to you, that it builds your faith, that it helps you be a better leader and a better influencer in and through your life. If this is helpful to you, we'd love you to subscribe and also share it with somebody else to encourage them too. Thanks. Hey everybody, I wanted to share with you a short devotional on what I call one thing. This is actually one of my passions in my life. And uh, I don't know if you can see it in the camera here, but right behind me is actually a little plaque that somebody in our church made me that says one thing, and then underneath it, it has a reference, scripture reference, Psalm 27, verse 4. Um, One of my beliefs in life is that it's important to keep the most important things as most important. Or the way I like to say it is, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Right? And it's easy to get kind of mixed up and lost in life. And so we need to regularly recenter, re put things in the right order in our lives. I think that's one of the gifts of worship is that when we worship God, we're putting God in his rightful place in our lives and it helps us reorder our lives appropriately. I call it centering myself. It's putting putting God back into the center of my world and everything else gets, you know, helps gets ordered properly when I do that. So what does that have to do with this term one thing? Well, the term one thing comes up three times in scripture that that I really love. Uh, My favorite is Psalm 27 verse 4. So in Psalm 27 verse 4 we have David, he's uh, saying, God is my light, he's my salvation. I'm not going to fear anything. The world could crumble around me. And then he says this. He says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and I'm going to seek after that, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And then he says this, To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of Him in His temple. He says, If there's one thing I want in all my life, the one thing I want is to be with God, to gaze on God's beauty, to, to seek God. Uh, with my life. If, if that's all I have, that's going to be the one thing, right? If I had to pick one thing that's the only thing, that's it. I'm going to pursue Jesus with my all. Okay, so that's, that's David, Psalm 27. Well, guess what? In Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul talks about his own life. It's actually, the, I think, the most autobiographical passage of Paul's where he says, hey, here's here's my journey. And he says, I used to be all about being a good person. And he talks about that in, in graphic form. It's hilarious. Philippians 3, the first few verses, you've got to read those. And you just see Paul saying, I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I was the best. If anybody followed all the laws of the whole Bible, I was the man. Like, I was awesome. Trained under Gamaliel. I knew it all. I did it all. I lived it all. I was zealous for God. And then he says, but you know what? God captured me. I was confused. I was actually wrong. And you're like, what, Paul? You were such a good guy. You just described all your good guy. And he says, actually, when I discovered that what I needed wasn't to be good, what I needed was to have Jesus because he is all that is good. And he starts talking about how God captured him by his grace, that Paul realized, that he was a sinner who needed a savior, that instead of trying to earn his salvation, he needed Christ to impart salvation to him. He needed Jesus' righteousness to become his own. He needed to find salvation not by his own works, but by God's grace. So Paul's describing that radical transformation in his life. He's like, I found out life wasn't about being good. It was about being forgiven. It was about finding God. It was about finding a relationship with God through Christ. And he's describing that. He says, you know what? Now, now the pursuit of my life is a person. The pursuit of my life isn't to to be, uh, you know, perfectly righteous. The pursuit of my life is the righteous one. It's Jesus. And he says, this is the one thing I go after and the one thing I pursue. And I'm putting everything else behind me. And the only thing I'm going for in life is that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, that I might know him in the fellowship of his sufferings, that I might lay hold of that which Christ has laid hold of me for. What did Jesus lay hold of me for? Well, a love relationship with himself, right? That's what he laid. So I'm just, I'm pursuing that one thing. And that's a great passage, Philippians 3. It's one of my favorite passages in all the Bible. Psalm 27, David says, one thing, it's all Jesus. Philippians chapter 3, Paul says, one thing, right? And you know, actually, 
uh, Paul's previous self, when he thought life was all about just being a good person, do you know what that turned him into? It's kind of sad, but it turned him into a judgmental jerk. <laughs> You'd think it would turn him into something awesome, but it actually turned him into somebody who became kind of arrogant, who was judgmental of other people, all those things. So whenever you see that kind of rising up in you or rising up in other people, you think, hmm, there's religion at its worst. Right? That's not pursuing Jesus, that's pursuing just my goodness. And uh, when you flip that and say, actually, it's all about just pursuing the righteous one, right? then you discover uh, uh, the, the goodness of God and the grace of God. And actually what happens is your heart melts. You fall in love with Jesus, you fall in love with people, and you want to just serve and love people. So, one thing, David, Psalm 27. Paul, Philippians chapter 3, and then the last one is Luke chapter 10. Jesus is with some of his friends, Mary and Martha. He's over at their house, and Martha's cooking this meal, right? And uh, Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. They're just hanging out, visiting, chilling together. And uh, Martha's like sweating in the kitchen, right? And she's working so hard, kind of like Paul, the beginning of Philippians 3, working so hard. And she's getting more and more frustrated. My sister isn't helping. You know, we have Jesus over. He's an important guest. We should be you know, making him this good meal, and uh, she's, she's more and more frustrated, and she finally kind of comes storming out of the kitchen, and she says, Jesus, would you talk to my sister? Because, you know, she really wants to just yell at her sister, but she thinks maybe do it through Jesus this time, right? She probably had this conversation with her sister a few times, and she says, Jesus, talk to my sister. Tell her to get to work, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sweating here, and uh, she's just sitting around doing nothing. It's like, it's like what she always does. Well, I'm adding that piece, but I'm just imagining that. But Jesus' response is fascinating, right? He says, Martha, Martha, you're busy and encumbered with so many things. You just, your world is caught up with busyness. Your world is caught up with doing. And he says this, he says, but actually, Mary has chosen the better part. He says, one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the best thing. One thing, one thing, one thing, and Mary has chosen it. Is it great to be in the kitchen? Yes, that's awesome. Is it great to be busy? Good for you, Martha. But you gotta get your priorities right. And the one thing, you could be making this meal and missing Jesus, missing the relationship, missing the very reason you're making the meal. There's one thing, and Mary's got that figured out, and she's just sitting here enjoying that and making the most of that. And so get a hold of that. It's not wrong to make the meal, but make sure that the main thing is the main thing. Because the main thing is keep the main thing, the main thing, and the main thing is one thing, and that is your relationship with God. Thanks, that's the one thing lesson.